This installation video will cover many 8-inch widespread 049 series models. All 8-inch faucets have handles that are separate from the spout and the spread in the sink can vary between 8 and 15 inches across. Please confirm your model number applies to this video on our website prior to this installation. For this video installation, we'll be using the Pasadena 8-inch widespread faucet. This product should be installed in accordance with all local and state building codes. If you don't see your faucet's name or model number associated with any posted video, call 1-800-P-FAUCET. That's 1-800-732-8238 to speak to a customer service specialist. Or visit FisterFaucets.com to download your step-by-step -step instruction manual. These are the recommended tools that you'll need for this installation. A screwdriver, plumber's putty, plumber's tape, an adjustable wrench, and some safety glasses or goggles. Additional helpful tools are a flashlight and a cleanup cloth. Some installations may require new shutoff valves or other additional tools, which are not covered in this video. Check our Tools and Tips video on our website for further information. Now, you've already removed your old faucet and cleaned the area of the sink where your new faucet will go. Your water supply valves are still shut off, so let's get started. Take your new faucet out of the box. You should have the following items. Your pre-assembled spout, one spout putty ring, one long mounting nut, one horseshoe washer, one pre-assembled pop-up drain assembly, a lift rod, two valve bodies, two handles, two plastic rings, one hose assembly, and one quick install tool. First, you'll need to disassemble both hot and cold water valve bodies. The top of the hot one is colored red, and the top of the cold one is blue. Remove the clip and inlet line adapter, and slide the square-shaped washer, the threaded mounting nut, and the inlet line adapter off of the valve stem and set them aside for the moment. With the other parts removed, you can now insert the valve stems into their proper holes in the sink. You'll need to position the hot water valve with the red ring on the left side of the spout and the cold water valve in the right side hole of the sink. Temporarily place the faucet handles onto the stems to align the levers, but do not use the handles to tighten the valves. Now, you'll need an extra pair of hands for the next part. Have someone hold the flat notches on the valve body while you go under the sink to secure both valve stems to the sink. Using the parts that you previously removed from the valve bodies, place the square washer followed by the mounting nut over the stem and begin to tighten. Use your quick install tool to tighten each valve to the sink while your help continues to hold the valve body in place above the sink. A tip. During this tightening process, it's a good idea to test your valve handle placement to ensure the valve is installed correctly and that your handles will mount correctly, pointing straight out from the faucet spout in the off position. Once the water valves are secured tightly to the sink, you'll want to place and tighten the faucet handles onto the sink. Place the plastic rings over the valves and onto the sink, and then place the handles on top of them. Be sure to have the faucet handles in their correct off position, straight out from the faucet spout. Then thread the hubs of the handles down onto the valves. Before final tightening, check to see that both handles rotate correctly. To mount the faucet spout to the sink, you'll need to apply plumber's putty in the groove along the bottom outer edge of the putty plate. Next, feed the water supply lines through the hole in the putty plate and into the hole in your sink.
Then insert the lift rod into the back of the faucet. Make sure it moves freely and return to under the sink. From underneath the sink, secure the faucet to the threaded mounting post that rests next to the water supply line. First comes the metal horseshoe washer, which is designed to accommodate the lines feeding out of the faucet. Be sure to have the bumpy side of the washer facing up for a tighter seal against the sink. Next is the long mounting nut for which you'll use the quick install tool to tighten onto the sink. Again, it helps to have someone topside to make sure you're tightening it on straight. Now you want to install the hose connector that connects to both the water supply receiving tube and the hot and cold valves. Be sure to remove the protective cap that's on the water supply receiving tube before installing the hose connector onto it. Push up onto the fitting and then check to see if the inner collet separates slightly by pulling back down on the center connector. If the faucet does not pull off the receiving tube, your connection is secure. Now push up hard to ensure a secure connection between the hose connector and the valve body. It is important to keep the alignment straight and to be careful not to damage the O-rings on the faucet valves as you push up on the faucet fitting to make the connection. When installed correctly, you should be able to see the window on the valve body. Now you're ready to connect the existing water lines to both of the valve bodies. While holding the nut of the water supply line with an adjustable wrench, use the quick install tool to screw in the inlet line adapters for your hot and cold water supply lines. It's important to note that the hot water supply always connects to the left inlet and the cold water supply lines connect to the right inlet. Once you have the inlet line adapters attached to the water supply lines, Connect each one to its correct side of the sink by using the connector clips that you insert through the windows on the valve stem. Push the clip tightly through to the other side. Do this for both lines. Now that the faucet is connected and secured, it's time to head back to the sink to install your pop-up drain assembly. First off, you want to disassemble the pop-up assembly before you install it into your sink. Remove the stopper from the flange. Then remove the flange from the drain body by unthreading it counterclockwise. Next, unscrew the ball rod nut from the drain body. And then remove the spring clip from the ball rod and set them all aside for the moment. To insert the drain body into the hole of the sink, first apply a bead of plumber's putty under the flange and then remove any excess plumber's putty. Wrap some Teflon tape around the threads of the drain body. Then, from under the sink, thread it to the bottom of the flange. Tighten the drain body's lock nut until the rubber washer seats securely inside the drain opening. Tighten and make sure to adjust so that the ball rod opening faces the rear of the sink. Then insert and secure the drain assembly into the P-trap pipe fitting and again tighten by hand. Before dropping the stopper into the drain body, you need to determine if you prefer to have the stopper fixed, which provides a tighter seal when the drain is closed, but requires some uninstall of the stopper connection if it needs to be removed for cleaning. Or if you prefer it mounted in a removable form where it can more easily be removed from the drain and is easier for cleaning purposes. It's completely up to you how you prefer to install the stopper. If you prefer the stopper to be fixed, then drop the stopper into the drain body with the offset slot facing the rear. Then go below the sink and insert the shorter end of the ball rod into the opening in the back of the drain body and through the offset slot. Then hand tighten the ball rod nut, but make sure not to over tighten. If you prefer the stopper to be removable, then drop the stopper into the drain body with the offset slot facing the side. Then go below the sink and insert the shorter end of the ball rod into the opening in the back of the drain body and alongside the offset slot. Although you may not be able to see it, the ledge on the stopper is now resting on top of the rod. 
Next, hand tighten the ball rod nut and make sure not to over tighten. To connect the lift rod to the drain assembly, start with the ball rod in the down position. Place one end of the spring clip onto the end of the ball rod. Insert the ball rod through any hole on the strap connection. Now, we've chosen to insert the ball rod through the third hole in the strap for our installation. Then, secure the strap and the ball rod by connecting the other end of the spring clip onto the ball rod. Now, with the ball rod still in the bottom position, insert the bottom of the lift rod into the hole at the top of the strap. If needed, you can adjust the lift rod height by removing and choosing a different hole in the strap to mount the ball rod through. Above the deck, be sure to leave enough space between the lift rod knob and the spout body when the lift rod is down. Once you've determined the proper position of the lift rod and the drain assembly, tighten the screw on the strap with your wrench. Return topside and confirm that the pop-up is operating properly. If necessary, make any adjustments. All that's left to do now is to check for leaks. Go back under the sink and turn on the hot and cold water valves. Make sure the water lines are not dripping or spraying any water. Return topside and before you run any water to be sure to remove the aerator from the faucet's head and allow the hot and cold water to run for at least 15 seconds to clear the water lines. Then reinstall and tighten the aerator. We hope this video has made your DIY experience a success. Visit us at FisterFaucets.com for more tips and tools for your DIY projects. At Fister, your experience matters to us and we are committed to providing you the finest products and best customer experience. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact us online or at our toll-free telephone number displayed on your screen. Fister, it's the experience that matters.